Okay, and now we're going to talk a little bit about how Mapbox uh, data is available. So it's a little bit confusing. I'm not going to go into the code of it yet. We're actually going to go into the code next time when we look at layers. But I want to prepare you for thinking about it. So you can load in GeoJSON data directly here. So let's go and just make a very basic GeoJSON in GeoJSON.io, as we have done before. So we'll just do a simple GeoJSON with some stuff. Okay, great. Now we just take that, and I'm just going to copy it right into here. Var GeoJSON. Boom. Okay. Now if we wanted to add that GeoJSON, let's just look that up. Add GeoJSON Mapbox GLJS multiple geometries from one GeoJSON source. In this case, we're going to we're going to just copy this and we're going to see how far it gets us. We're going to take all this map.add layer, map.add source. There's also it's in this map.onload thing. We're just going to copy all of that. I'm not going to ask too much about what it's doing and see if we can get our GeoJSON to load. So, maybe we can get our GeoJSON. And we just come in here and this looks like where it kind of starts. So all this data, we'll get rid of it, and we'll load in our new GeoJSON. And I'm not going to change anything else. I just want to see if anything shows up. Okay, so we do get a polygon. The polyline doesn't appear to be there, so that's kind of a problem. But basically, we can add this GeoJSON in and get a little bit of stuff out. And there's some fill stuff. Okay, so this should look a little bit familiar from all that time we spent in Mapbox Studio. But let's go in and actually look at what's going on. So we can't just get the GeoJSON data immediately um, in the same way that it's just a variable in here straight out of Mapbox. Since it's all mixed up in the layers of the map, you can get it out, but you have to wait for it to render. Um, and that's one important part. And also, there's a certain limitation where you can't get the data that's not being rendered on the map. It's part of the way that Mapbox doesn't load, like, you know, 400 gigabytes of data in, in order to serve your map. It, it allows you to not have all the data of the map at once. But that can mean sometimes if you're trying to access or analyze data outside the rendered area of the map, it can be a problem. So when it comes to layers, we have to think about them in a couple ways. We have to think about the name that we give them here. This name is Course 2, Course 1, that kind of stuff. That's an important name that you actually are going to be using when you refer to layers in Mapbox GLJS, as well as the name of the data set, or sorry, the tile set that it comes from. So there's, you're gonna, we're going to be accessing the tile set names and their, even their categories are going to be potentially part of what we're looking at. So here in map, all these map box things, there's all these different layers that you can access. And those are also going to be available to us in Mapbox GLJS. We have to make sure we, uh, we have them kind of separated in our head. And then there's also ways to query the data sets directly. Um, because you can just, uh, as it were, download these, that means that that's actually a live file that you could call any time. Um, and Mapbox does allow you to do that. So through that, we're actually kind of using data from these different pieces because maybe sometimes you need the GeoJSON, the entire thing, for some kind of filter. But the tile set you need because you need to add an extra layer for some kind of color or style effect that you didn't put into the original Mapbox style. For instance, on one of my maps, I needed something to have color, but I didn't want color in the style, so I just added another layer and colored it. Uh, in Mapbox GLJS. Then you're also getting data from the style itself and from its layers in there, and you have to access those a particular way, and it's restricted by rendering. So I wanted to like front load a lot of the complex stuff in this lesson in terms of just telling you all this crazy stuff about how it's interrelated, but it's different, and we're going to be accessing it different ways. Uh, just because it is complicated, and as we walk through it, it'll start to make sense. But you should have a picture of the whole thing before we get going. So in the next video, we're going to start actually working with some of the data from these different places, as well as the data we just loaded in. We're going to look a little more closely at this add layer and what's going on with that, um, talk about the different types of styling we can do, and then we're going to move on to more complicated things like markers and uh, more difficult data 
to doing things dynamically.